This is the Lockpicker 1969, and welcome to my channel, and welcome to this next episode of Interview with the Lockpicker. Today's guest is Rhino Lock and Key Locksport. Say hi, Rhino. Hello, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity. So, how and when did you get into Locksport? Um, I got into to Locksport rather recently, but... Uh, first had a fascination with locks when I was about uh, 10 years old um, and I was able to pick the bathroom door lock with a, a bobby pin that really got me uh, going into just figuring out puzzles and, um, and lock sport in general okay so you had told me a little bit about um how you gotten a number of, of lock picking tools from your father. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah. So, um, my father was a locksmith by trade and he decided to, uh, retire and, and shut his business down. And, uh, he went ahead and passed his tools down to me after he passed his tools down to me. Um, you know, he showed me some stuff and, I had a bunch of uh, American locks from um, my time in the service, and he told me that they were basically unpickable. And <laughs> uh, I didn't know anything about progressive pinning, but as I said, I, I like puzzles, and just started to progressive pin it. Um, I was able to pick that lock, and. I was like, all right, well, I did the the thing that he said I wouldn't be able to do. I, I guess I'm done here. So I set that down and uh, didn't return back to it for, for quite some time. So what got you back into it then? So I was sitting at home one day, and I get a phone call from the missus, and she tells me that I need to uh, bring my lock picks over because uh, her son went ahead and locked himself out of uh, his bedroom and uh, I didn't know where the picks were. We went ahead and did a, a Google search and found somebody uh, local, a uh, local store selling um, a rake, a simple rake. <laughs> uh, went, went down and picked up that, that rake. And uh, it was the, the first time that, uh, I, I picked a lock in a long time and I, I struggled with it, even just raking it, but, uh, eventually got it open and it felt so good to actually put the skill to, to, to use that I went ahead and found, uh, my lock picks that were given to me and, um, jumped on, on YouTube and tried finding, uh, more more information to see if I couldn't uh, expand on my skill set. Okay. So you said you haven't been doing it for long then. When did you really dive into it? How long ago? Um, let's see, probably about three, four months ago. Um, it was uh, after I found your channel uh, I went ahead and entered into one of the giveaways and I was actually <laughs> just driving to Walmart as I was listening to your giveaway announcement, uh, on who won and everything. And, um, I won one of your Bavolsky, uh, <laughs> lockout tagout locks. Gotcha. And I was, I was like, Whoa, um, I'm really excited. I, I listened to the the giveaway a couple more times just to make sure that it was me. <laughs> um, and then I, I reached out to you and you sent me that lock over. As soon as I got that lock, I popped it open and it's the first time that I encountered a, uh, a dimple lock. Ah, okay. I was like, Oh man, I don't, even, I don't even have picks for this, but I'm just going to, to attack it with whatever I can. And, um, I ended up, opening the lock and I went to YouTube, uh, searched for Bavoski and I found lady locks channel. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, you know what? She's the only one that's done this. So let me, let me throw up a video. I didn't expect 
my YouTube channel to go much further than that one video. Um, and after uh, Lady Lox saw the video, she really inspired me to continue picking and posting more videos. Yep. Cool. I'm glad that the uh, <clears throat> giveaway was able to kick you off that way. That's great. That's great. <laughs> That's very cool. Um, so, okay. So can you talk about your channel a little bit then? Yeah. Um, so basically uh, I continued on making videos more as a, uh, document my progression in lock picking and if anybody found anything useful out of it uh you know i always willing to help other members of the community um now i've started recently and i got some videos to go back and, and redo the thumbnails on but uh the left side banner of my videos will depict what uh, belt ranking the lock is that I'm, oh, okay. I'm picking. Cool. Um, and I just recently added another uh, indicator for challenge locks. Uh, challenge locks will uh, have like a little envelope stamp looking thing on it. Okay, cool. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, so you were talking about how you, you were working through progressing. Um, are you participating in the belt, belt ranking system? You know, at this moment, uh, I'm not participating per se. Uh, I keep on um, jumping over belts as I'm um, picking. Uh, my most recent uh, pick was um, the gold D9. And oh, okay. that's a, a brown brown belt level lock. Hell yeah. I'm now, yeah. Um, I'm now in a position where I need to uh, create my first challenge lock and get someone to uh, pick that. Okay. And uh, mentor um, through some locks. So okay. yep. once I get those two things done, then I'll probably go ahead and submit for my brown belt. Hey, um, <clears throat> you have a lot of people that did their interviews before you, that, uh, including myself. Um that can more than help uh, with the whole challenge lock making thing and finding people to take it on and actually film it um, and go through the process of gutting it, taking it apart, pointing out all of the changes that were made that count towards the points for a challenge lock for a blue belt. So just, hey, shout out and probably a bunch of people willing to help you out with that. So awesome. along the way... Um, so how did, how did you train yourself in lock picking? So, um, like I said, my, my father gave me a bunch of, uh, his old lock picking stuff. And, uh, inside of that, uh, he had the full, uh, Foley bell saw, uh, locksmith course. So I went ahead and, uh, went through the course. I didn't, uh, submit the paperwork to Foley bell saw I just went through all of the training material and uh, com completed that. Um, and then as far as picking in general goes, uh, just lots of uh, kick cylinder um, defiance and a uh, couple residential schlags and a couple, well, mostly uh, quick set. Okay. So yep. you mentioned to me during the pre-interview that um, you had thought about working on the side as a locksmith. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, seeing how I went ahead and um, read all that material, why not put that knowledge to use? Uh, so I've been doing residential locksmith on the, locksmithing on the side, uh, mainly for friends and family. Um this year, though, I am going to be getting my uh, insurance squared away and broaden my horizons and really reach out there and, and try to score some contracts. Cool. So that was essentially how Rhino Lock and Key was born, huh? <laughs> 
Yeah. It took a while to, to come up with a nice snazzy name. Um, Rhino is a... Uh, I was just going to ask area. you. <laughs> Rhino is an area here uh, locally where I'm at. Um, ah, okay. It's a ri- river north. Uh, it's kind of an artsy area, but it's a well-known name, and um, so name association goes a long way. Okay, cool. So how's it been going so far? So I mean, far, it's, it's been going well. Um, like I said, uh, getting that insurance piece is, is really the big thing, and I should have that all tidied up by the end of the month. And that'll broaden it out quite a bit more than I would assume. It will. So Then, then maybe I'll have some good stories. I, I believe it was Picksmith <laughs> that... Uh, no, it was Rubber Band. crazy one. Rubber Band. Oh, was it Rubber Band? <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yep. I need to get him for a yeah. part. I need to get him for a part two and... Just let them tell stories. Just tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the pre-interview, you mentioned that you had spent some time in the military. You want to talk about that a bit? Uh, yeah, I um, um, ended up joining the military uh, right before uh, 9-11 happened. Um, then while I was going through uh, tech school, uh, 9-11 hit, and... Towers came down, and military took on a, a different role than just uh, training. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was de- deployed to, uh, let's see, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, um, Iraq, and a couple other areas. Um, it was really neat, though, to spend so much time uh, there at the beginning, and I was able to be uh, deployed there at, at, towards the, the very end as well. So got to see a lot of neat stuff. Uh, while I was in the military, I did nothing with the locks besides uh, put them on my foot locker. Um, <laughs> I was a jet engine mechanic. Oh, okay. And Any particular jet? I, trained, uh, I was a F-15, F-16 oh, cool. uh, jet engine mechanic. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, and then I transitioned over to IT. Okay, but you said you you mentioned to me that you wouldn't be where you are today, where you are now, without the military. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah. So, um, because I kind of really had a, a knack for um, information technology. Uh, well, several things happened. One, I broke my arm, uh, so that took me off of maintenance duty uh, and put me into engine tracking and trending. And we would use databases to trend the data that we'd receive after each flight to uh, figure out time changes and see if there were any anomalies that might happen to make the jet engine parts fail um <clears throat> did that for a few years and um after i got out of active duty i started going to school for it and i uh, was working as a work study and i got a job with a government agency uh, through the work study program Hmm. and was able to put my databasing skills to use and became a uh, back-end web developer. Okay, cool. So, I... yeah, if it, if it wasn't for breaking my arm and, and yeah. data management, then I wouldn't be working yeah. as a back-end web developer. Hell yeah. I, I work with web developers every day. Um, so... I remember, see, when 1999 rolled around, I was, I've was i been working in IT for, God, 36-plus years. Um, I remember in 1999, the big scare was that all the programs that had been written were only set for two digits for the year. So everybody was all worried that everything was just going to break down. <laughs> When it rolled over to 2000, and I remember the panic we all went through and working with all the developers to fix 
code, fixed databases and everything. It was just, it was crazy. So. Yeah, I don't know if I, uh, I wasn't in IT at that time. I, I do remember the, the scare and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we do rely on uh, information technology a, a whole lot. Yeah. And it is a really uh, scary thing to think that just that coming down would cripple us. Yeah. Well, I remember having to spend New Year's Eve at the data center watching all of the related apps and everything to make sure and testing, make sure everything was working as soon as the, uh, as soon as the uh, year rolled over. That was, that was interesting. <laughs> interesting times. Um, I wanted to go over a little bit about um, what your experience has been like with the community. You know, um, overall, it's been a very positive experience. Um, I don't think there's been too many times that I've, I've seen too much negativity out of the, the community. I, I was very cautious because uh, I joined Discord groups for different video games that I played and their video games are always toxic. Uh, oh yeah. So I was, I was a little, a little cautious in, in really getting into discord. Uh, but since I've been on discord, it, it seems like everybody's willing to help for the most part. And, Oh yeah. Uh, lots of, of, uh, great pickers out there that will give you feedback and help you progress. Yeah, I think I had similar experiences with online communities, um, going through a number of them since going back to be just before 2010 even, and found a lot of them just very toxic people who with very small minds, essentially, that have nothing better to do than find fault in other people because they apparently can't find happiness in their own lives. But coming to and then the gaming community oh my lord that was toxic as all heck um and you know especially in the forums but coming to lock picking was a blessing um just the people how helpful how how friendly encouraging giving they they are was just it took me back i was like not expecting that in an online community and you know, I use Facebook and Reddit and Discord, and I finally, you know, un I went kicking and screaming into Instagram. But um, I, I totally agree with you on this community with, with regard to the online aspect of it. But so where do you find yourself spending the most time on Discord or? Um, I had uh, the most time. I don't know. I think I, I, I try to split my time up evenly between uh, Instagram, YouTube, and, and Discord. Um, I do a lot of my own video promoting on, uh, say, 60% on um, YouTube, 40% uh, on, or about 30% on Discord, and 10, or not Discord, but uh, Instagram, and the last 10 on Discord. It's really hard to get a video posted up on, on Discord. I've been having troubles with that. Okay. Um, well, perhaps you can talk to me after uh, this, and maybe I can help you there somehow. Um, I've been posting them up on several different Discord servers for some time now, and there is a, there is a, a small trick to it, but i um, happy to go through that with you if you want. So um, before we wrap up... Um, I wanted to ask you to talk about uh, challenge locks because we, we talked about that a little bit and wondered if you wanted to touch on that. Yeah. So uh, just so happened that I got a bunch of uh, challenge locks uh, recently. Uh, Lady locks went ahead and sent over a couple to me and my first challenge lock that I just uh, did was the uh, VIT one. Or oh, yeah. number one. I've seen the videos on um, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a very interesting challenge lock. <laughs> and I will be having a video coming out this week to cover the uh Wills Polly or what's the other name? The other name is Williams Brain. 
I haven't heard that one. Um, that one that one was definitely uh, a fun one. Um, it was very challenging until you get the uh, the trick, and then um, it was very satisfying. So, okay. Well, hey, like I said before, when you get when you get ready to make your own challenge lock and you're pursuing the belts, uh, hit everybody up because you'll you'll get a ton of help with that. I have no doubt. Um, all right. So before we um, before we wrap up, did you is there something or anything you'd like to say to our audience? You know, this is probably one of the questions that I thought about the most. Uh, because I know everybody has something great to say and, you know, it, it's really just be kind to people out there. Uh, you never know what they're dealing with or yes. what background they're coming from. So give them the benefit of the doubt, even if they're just, uh, you know, being a complete douche, uh, you don't know what kind of day they're having or what they're going through. So sometimes just a, a, a simple smile will go a long way. Yeah. You don't know if the first time you're meeting somebody, they're not having their worst day. Right. You know, and just being nice sometimes can make the difference for that person having that worst day. So definitely I agree with that a hundred percent. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been fun getting to know you. Um, it, totally enjoyed our our pre-interview conversation um and uh i i want i enjoyed this uh, interview very much um so with that being said i'll wrap this up um if you are currently a subscriber thank you if you are not yet a subscriber please hit that subscribe button uh, hit like on the video that helps uh, us YouTubers out with the algorithm and so forth as well. Um, turn on notifications and all so that you can be made you can uh, be notified about content like this as well as future interviews, uh, giveaways and their drawings and some of my other content. And with that, um, uh, thank you for uh, listening in.